now through the miracles of modern technology. Zany Worldwide Banner featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim in an on-topic, off-topic free-for-all. Welcome to the Gun Talk After Show. The After Show starts now because, well, it's after the other show. That's what we do here. Hey, Tom Gresham here. Uh, if you want to join us on the After Show, <laughs> you can't if you're listening to this because it's already over. Because we did it after the show, and you're listening to the recorded version. It's a time thing, isn't it, guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. A shiftage. Okay, so we are joined. Michelle is uh, on a trip. So we are joined today by Tom, who is helping us out in the studio. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. It's great to be back. Thanks. Yes, indeed. And we, uh, of course, I'm Tom. And so Jim today is going to be, we're going to give him a Southern name. He's going to be Jim Tom. <laughs> An honorary <laughs> Tom. Yeah. An honorary Tom. It's like Jim Bob, but it's, it's Jim Tom. Okay. So there you go. Because in Southernese, you know, you have to have two names, you know. I can deal with Billy it. Billy Rob, Billy Bay, you know, Billy Ray, Jim Tom. And, and I do know a couple like, of Jim Bobs. Yeah, you don't like the Jim Bob Ellen that concerned you a little bit. So we'll just, we'll go Jim Tom. You know, we're, we're not judgmental around here. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> Well, now, that's not exactly true. I mean, if you want to talk about 9 millimeter versus 45, then we have a problem. We're very judgmental. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Very judgmental on that. But <laughs> anything else, I don't care. It's, it's, it just don't care. I tell you what, we got John on the line uh, so today. It's, I guess, John, you're going to have to be John Tom, too. So there you go. <laughs> In Georgia. Hey, John, how are you? Uh, it's good to be in the asylum with you. <laughs> oh, you know us, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I think you are related somewhere along the lines. I'm not sure. <laughs> family. That could that could be. It's it's all a good big Southern family. So yeah. I hear you uh, you have range reports for us. Oh, me and my son took about a, about eight different guns out. I know you don't have time for all of that. I was just going to sure give you some high points if you wanted to hear about them. Absolutely, uh, let's go. Had a CZ. I was surprise of the bunch. It was a full size nine millimeter and it was the sweetest shooting gun I've held in a long time. Uh, I wish I could tell you exactly the model designation, but uh, I was really surprised by it. The most accurate thing I picked up that day. I tell you, uh, CZ makes had, good uh, guns. The one, a brand new uh, m and nine millimeter compact from Smith & Wesson. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, worked like a hammer. I mean, it was, you, you can't say anything bad about it. But it has about the same personality as a hammer, too. You know, what can you say? <laughs> Nobody's going to give it a name. Oh, come on. It, you know, like uh, when they used to talk about combat Tupperware, it's just a mm-hmm. tool that works. It works all the time, but uh, I'm afraid no personality to it. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I understand what you I mean. Work. I mean, it... it... Yeah. Hey, boy, wait, wait, let's, let's, let's not move on from the M&P because I love the M&P. You know what I like about it is that replaceable back strap. I put the small one on, and I use that as my go-to gun for teaching people to shoot because it just works. Like you say, it's stone simple, and you can put the small grip on it. And I don't even care if you have big hands. I think everybody kind of feels good about that small grip. So, oh, yeah. you know, n- not being fancy in this case is kind of nice because, one, it keeps the price down. And two, it's just a perfect carry gun. If it gets beat up, who cares? Yeah, oh, it's. I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon, but it's it's not my favorite. Okay, uh, all right. So what else you take? Uh, the one which really made me enjoy starting to shoot again was uh, the Ruger GP100. It's Ooh. the sweetest sort of, I just love it. I don't know what it is about uh, using a revolver <laughs> over a, a semi, but... I just enjoyed it so much. It was the the model 1715 had the three inch uh, barrel with fixed sights, mm-hmm. and it just it handled the 38 specials, you know, and and the 357 both, and it was so much more pleasant to shoot than that little lightweight 38 I have. Uh, oh I gosh, just, yes. I just enjoy that, and it it shot it shot so good. Uh, we were shooting at uh, what we considered to be a uh, self-defense range, around five to seven yards and like that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. even with me, I have bad eyes with glasses and I can't half see. I was still getting six-inch groups just shooting offhand. And uh, I even tried point shooting, and I was keeping it within eight inches. That so, sounds like me. I'm blind in one eye and can't see out the other. That's about it. That's why I, I would get some big, those big... Uh, Excess sites, but uh, and I'm afraid they might blind me even worse. 
and the one which you, the gun which you really need to, especially people who have grown up using nine millimeters and things like that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. nothing against them, I like nines, but take out some guys like my son who's grown up. He only got interested in guns a few years ago, and he's been shooting mm-hmm. mostly nine millimeters. And his friend who went out with us brought his nine out there also, and all. And I got a little gun I felt had for about 25 years. It's a variation of the Smith & Wesson Model 29. Oh. Yeah, and give it to them and let them shoot it. And after they've grown up to that 9mm and they grab a hold of that, it's we got an expression, it puts the fear of God back in them. Nothing like shooting a big old forty four Magnum to make you break out in a big smile. Yeah, it's and uh, this was one of their variations. Got the rounded butt on it with the three inch barrel. Mm-hmm. It is. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, I picked it up about like I said about twenty five years ago. I don't think I could afford it if I had to buy it now. But it was it was just so much fun. Even though it did. Uh, it, it, it scares you a little bit the first time. It is a pleasure to shoot that gun, really. Well, you know, the other thing is they're crazy, scary accurate. Yes. Uh, even, I like to say, even somebody with bad eyes is not a very good shot. You can still hit what you're, you're pointing it at. And I'm, I'm afraid if it came down to it, happened to make a choice, I would just about have to go back to revolvers. I'm glad I don't That's have a very that interesting choice. point. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we don't. That's right. Thank goodness we don't have to do that. But, hey, that is a whole string of good range reports, John, and I appreciate that, and we're going to cogitate on that a little bit. Listen, thank you so much for your call, and thanks for being part of the uh, asylum around here. All right, guys, um, John makes an ex- interesting point. If you have a young shooter who may have shot nothing but semi-autos, if you can get, and I really like the idea of a... Um, Mid-size 357. People have never shot one of those. They don't understand the precision, how well they're made, how solid they feel, and what a pussycat they are with 38s. That's that can be a real education for somebody. What do you think? Yeah, I used to always train people with revolver first, and mm-hmm. I got I got away from that. Uh, actually, I've neglected it quite a bit in the past couple of years when I really think about it. And I'm, I'm bringing the revolver out more for uh, hey, this is a novelty. Check out how they used to do it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but the th- what we do is I'm sure you've done it too. Easy. You, you load up the uh, cylinder with 38s and 357s, and mm-hmm. you don't know when that round's going to come. And you'll you'll often see people flinching because they think they got a big big uh, charge ready to go, and it mm-hmm. isn't. So you can kind of it's it's kind of like a like, a like dr- the ball and dummy drill where you're using uh, your dummy rounds in there, and you yeah. can see when you drop a hammer on a, an empty or a dummy round, and if the barrel jerks downward, then you know you're flinching. Right, and they're, they're blinking and <laughs> shoulders are dropping. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah, that was a mm-hmm. dummy. Same kind of thing. Uh, but revolvers mm-hmm. are cool, and then I can't wait to shoot Michelle's. I'm, I'm itching. Michelle's is on the way. They assure me that she's going to get her three twenty seven Federal Magnum uh, Ruger lcr Ooh. uh we got we got ours in did at, you uh, at the office yeah we do got ours we in. Had, haven't that, taken to the we? range yet no no i was <laughs> I, I made sure that hertz was actually on the way before i thought i would go public with the fact that we got ours <laughs> because Smart man. it could it could be really bad otherwise you know hey i think we should roll the dice we have inbound call here and obviously no screener because tom's slacking off over here oh to, well Trying to participate. Would you wake in the him after up show? over there? Let's just go All live. Right, let's just punch happens. it in and find out what we get. Okay, go for it. Welcome uh, to the after show. Well, I'm, I'm amazed I got on this first try, but uh, along the lines of that uh, LCR, I was at one of our local gun shops, and I don't think they realized they had one in stock. But uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the 327. Uh, federal magnum yeah mm. so uh, did you did yeah, you scarf I, I, it up i don't want to act too anxious well i'm going to go by probably monday if it's still there it's still out like, yeah it, 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 i think it'll still be there just clear at the back of the shelf uh <laughs> reason i called though we had a recent uh incident in our uh hometown here where a fellow went to the movie theater and he had his concealed carry permit and was trying to move his gun in his pocket and it went off the uh-huh. yeah. mm-hmm. I just and, read, in fact, I mentioned something about that at the first of the show. So that was in your area? 
Yeah, matter of fact, the next day I, I work in the hospital. I happened to see uh, one of the trauma surgeons who is is uh, uh, very much uh, he, he's into guns. We talk guns quite a bit, and I uh, asked him if he happened to be the surgeon to care of the fellow. And I've never seen him that upset. He, he said he went in and told the guy, he says, you realize it's people like you that give us uh, responsible gun owners a bad name. <laughs> Good and, for uh, him! Absolutely. And uh, he said, well, I'm a responsible gun owner. And he said, not after your first accidental discharge. And he said, right, officer. There was an officer right in the room. And he shook his head, yeah. Since then, the guy has been in the paper. It's unfortunately, he's been uh, way overplayed. Uh, and um, So let me ask you, because he- what I read was the, the guy, uh, now, it was, was it a, like a 380, something like that? It was uh, uh, what they said in the paper today, because they've had an article about it every day, and, and it's got a, uh, <clears throat> a lot of hearsay, but it, they said it was an M&P shield, and I believe a 3 Okay. Okay, a, a shield in uh, in a pocket. Yeah, shield's a 9 millimeter. Uh, was it in a holster? No. And the guy said, for now I'm going to wear a holster. But uh, the, the physician I talked to was very, very upset with the guy. And he just, uh, he's usually a very easygoing guy. I, I was pleasantly, I mean, and, and that's, that's who I've seen who've been the most upset. You know, obviously the people that don't understand just can't imagine why anybody would carry a gun into the theater. And, of course, my question mm-hmm. is I can't imagine anybody carrying a gun in their pocket. But uh, yeah, I mean, The whole idea, for those who don't know, let me explain, John, is that the, the reason you put it in a holster is so that the trigger guard is completely covered so you can't possibly get keys, chapstick, or a finger inside the trigger guard and pull the trigger. So you put it in a little, if it's going to go in your pants pocket, you put it in a holster, even if it's just one of those cloth sleeve holsters, then slide the whole holster into your pocket. And I read where this guy was saying, well, I'm a responsible gun owner. I've got military training. And anybody can have an accident. And my response to that is no, this was not an accident. This was negligence, pure and simple, all the way. This was not an accidental discharge. This was a negligent discharge. And he is just so lucky that he only shot himself and didn't shoot somebody in front of him. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I absolutely agree. And certainly the uh, surgeon involved would agree. And, uh, <laughs> I probably would said accidental or uh, uh, it should, negligent is the appropriate term to use. And Interestingly, the uh, reaction within the theater itself was fairly orderly. Um, yeah. Because the guy said, uh, oh, my God, I just shot myself. I've got my concealed carry. And um, there was another former serviceman there who uh, kind of went to help him and put a tourniquet on him and, and so forth. And they said, everybody just go, go ahead and get out. And there wasn't a big panic. And uh, right. the reaction of the theater goers themselves were pretty reasonable you know they hmm. they were a little shook up but uh, the course of the newspapers trying to make tremendous hay out of it oh Every, sure chaos yeah yeah well i've heard some people comment on that i, I said well you know the only people that are more upset about this you are i said who i said the responsible gun owners they absolutely yeah because he makes us look bad surprised to hear that it's bad pr yeah, yeah. That's bad. hey where where was this what town was this in uh, it's in the middle of Kansas, Salina, Kansas. Oh, I've been to Salina. That's not very far from the world's largest ball of string. Uh, well, it's a ball of twine, but who's going to say oh. words there? <laughs> twine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I wasn't I, precise. I, I've, lived here, I've been, lived here 30 years, and I've never been there to uh, the largest oh, ball of twine. You, what, whatever. you got to go over there. It's it's in Tipton, just due west of you over there. So I've, I've been there. I, I've been to the Ringneck Ranch hunting there. So uh, I had to go see the world's largest ball of twine. <laughs> well, because it was baling twine. You know, it's not baling string. I baling see. Twine. Not string. A twine. Okay. Thanks for calling in with that uh, info, because that's a whole lot more than we had already. Yeah, well, and I, I've talked to some of my sons in different parts of the country, and it does seem like it's uh, a little bit, um, you know, it's partial information and so forth. Right. But I uh, uh, thought I could set the record straight on that. Well, we appreciate that. Listen, thanks for the call. 
Hey, uh, Jim, I'm thinking let's take a quick break because when we come back, we're going to get a report on your experiment in open carry. Does that sound about right? I'm not one to argue with you. (laughs) Okay. We'll be right back. And Jim's going to talk open carry, and we're going to actually wake Tom up and get him in there because we haven't given him much of a chance. Uh, What? Where am I? Say what? Say what? All right. Be right back. Behind every revolution is a patriot. Just as this great country was founded on the ideals of many, the new Mossberg Patriot is the sum of all that came before it. Reliable. Timeless. Built to last. The classic American hunting rifle with a heritage forged over generations has come home. Mossberg. Built rugged. Proudly American. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. All right, we're back. It's Tom and Tom and Jim Tom. So Jim it's Tom, uh, yeah. our, our group today. <laughs> Tom, you might just explain to folks uh, a little bit about your background in guns and shooting. Uh, very little background in guns and shooting. Uh, Jim here okay. is actually the first one to put a gun in my hands. He'd... So how did that come about? Well, he walked into the studio one day and says, boys, we're closing down. It's stress relief day. We're going to the range. <laughs> so you did your regular thing, huh, Jim? You just took him out and said, all right, it's time to shoot. Well, yeah, some some guys have, you know, employee appreciation days. I mean, how much, how much better do you show your appreciation than at a range? I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. So what was your first thought on that, Tom, when he said, we're going to go over out there and shoot? I'm like, oh, Okay. <laughs> you know, so I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a gun owner, but I was not opposed mm-hmm. to the idea. And I thought it would be fun and then I could learn something. And I did. Yeah. There you go. Was it fun? It was absolutely fun. Uh, well, good. Got me hooked on it. So, Jim, so you, you know, you are an enabler big time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I've learned from the best. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. tell me what possessed you to try to do an experiment in open carry? Because I always slam open carry, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. I, and it's just kind of, you know, it's, well, how can you honestly be? It's, it's kind of like arguing, you know, liberal conservative stuff. If you're just arguing your point all the time, you really don't learn much. You're not informed. Yeah. You don't have so, anything to pull from. Right. And, I, and it comes to open carry, I, I can parrot what I hear from you and what I hear from other folks and what I read. And, but I'm kind of being a hypocrite if I don't try it and, and at least mm-hmm. have some foundation. And then the other way, <laughs> being Mr. Justification, the way I justified flip-flopping there and giving it a try was I'm an ambassador to guns and shooting sports. Mm-hmm. And I do it when I talk to people online and you know, we do a grocery store and all over the place. I'm constantly driving my wife nuts, approaching people and bringing up the topic <laughs> of shooting. You just walk up and say, hey, have I told you about my gun? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to see my gun? I'm pulling my gun out. You got to see this. So, so I decided, well, you know, I'm an ambassador of guns and, and people can be people can be conditioned either way any way you need to it's just a matter of saturation and mm-hmm. continuing it sure so i figure well you know it, we get such bad media every time somebody robs a convenience store some all guns are evil therefore gun owners are evil i'm not a gun owner anybody who is is got to be evil it's like come on so i figured well let's do a little bit of pro pr so and, and I, I admit it was a little theater involved sure i uh God, I made some mistakes too. It was really, what, what, well, fun. first of all, what gun did you carry? Gee, hmm. I wonder. Hmm. I wonder what what I the only actually the only gun I carry you, that I had ever uh, you, a good retention holster for. Was, you took the beast. I took the beast. I took the Sig. Oh, GT, huh. GT twenty ten millimeter. Yeah, yeah. It, it's and that was a mistake to do, but boy, it looked cool. 
Uh, <laughs> but that was about well, it. Hey, then, it, then it's not a mistake. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it was, I guess, some PR there, good, good or bad, a, a little bit theatrical, but um, it's not a carry gun, for me, at least. You know, if maybe if I was Yeah, seven, it's a big gun. Yeah, you, was, you would, you know, seven, for that, two, honestly, you, know. you would want a big belt, big belt, and a really solid holster Open and I kind of a belt. Oh, and I did. Right? I mean, I just got that Galco. Yeah. You remember a couple of weeks back? I got that. That's right. Awesome yeah. belt, great holster. It's just too too cumbersome for me. If I was it's seven just, foot yeah, two, it's, it'd be it's great. A lot. But yeah. So I mean, all I, right. So what, what? So what happened when you started carrying? Did you get uh, conversation, reaction, anything? Well, I decided I had to make a couple stops. So what I was going to do is I was going to go to local big box store, um, Menards, here in the Midwest. So mm-hmm. I had to do some shopping with my wife. So yeah, obviously she's she's carrying as well, but concealed, and she knows I'm. You know, I'm a concealed carry guy. I'm not an open carry guy again. And so she knew I was a little awkward. And uh, it just was. It was just weird. So I get out of the car. I don't well, walk. Kind of like the first time you conceal carry. That feels yeah, weird. Yeah, too. it's similar. It's very similar. Uh, although okay. the first time you conceal carry, I kind of like, well, I got something nobody else knows about. I, boy, I sure hope they don't know about it. I hope I hope I'm not printing. <laughs> you know, this time it was like, <laughs> man, out there. anybody that misses this is blind. Yeah. So I get out of the car. I don't walk 15 feet from my car, and there's a big security guy sitting out front, security jacket. Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, hello. I said, hi. How are you? And he says, I'm good. And I said, that makes three of us. And I just kept walking right by him. <laughs> 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 he didn't stop. He didn't say um, I And that store, I only had one kind of odd look. And the coolest part was um, I had one guy who was talking on the cell phone to his mom or girlfriend or somebody. And he's talking. He stopped in the middle of his conversation, watched me look by. He was more into the hardware. He's like, "Oh, cool!" And he went back to what he was doing. He just he just thought it was cool to see it. That's so kind that of like the yeah. reaction I have when I see yeah. see somebody open carry. Yeah, it's like, yeah, what are you carrying? Well, now, do you, do you guys see open carry very often where you are? Not very often, but that's kind of the reason I did it. I, I want to kind of get the message out there about it, and and, 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 and so people know you're in Ohio. Right, we're yeah. we're in Northwest Ohio. Okay. And okay. it's there are open carry events here all the time, uh, but mm-hmm. but in everyday life, normally the people you see carrying are law enforcement. I've okay. only once uh, seen anybody open carry in like a convenience store. Mm-hmm. So. And how was your take on that? Uh, nobody bothered him. Panhandlers leave you alone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what I figured I would do is, since I'm there anyway, and I've got a little bit of time to kill, I went looking around. This sounds really predatory. I went looking for some senior citizens that were there to offer help okay. to them, to kind of, you know, put the PR face on that we're decent people. We're not. So if they did see a gun guy in the store, it wasn't, oh, we saw this guy in a gun. We were so scared. It's like, this guy had a gun, but he helped us reach for this box. I couldn't get it down and help me load up right. my car, or that kind of deal. So it okay. was it was kind of PR. Well, I help people anyways. It's not like, you know, mega over sure. the top. But it was a little theatrical to try to get a read. And then I had some running around to do. So we went home. We, we made a, a drop off. Oh, actually, we stopped at a local uh, grocery store. And then I got a couple weird looks there, but mostly total total nobody even noticed. A couple weird looks, like, I'll pull the kids closer to me. Um, so were you surprised at the lack of reaction? It was a little short of what I would th- I would thought it would have been, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, got some positive head nods, which was cool. Still don't feel real comfortable doing it. And we talked about it, that you know what you may want to do, another way to go is a, your, your maybe regular carry gun with an inside the waistband holster, but tucking your shirt in so that the gun is exposed, mm-hmm. but it's not this huge, you know, freaking <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger kind yeah. of gun yeah. out there. Yeah. I just, I mean, look, it's, it's a great gun. It's a great looking gun, but it does call a lot of attention. All it needs, you know, is a little bit of neon around it and you'd be right there. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a lot of mass, but I mean, it'd be great, you know, for, if I was hog hunting or something, but it's, well, you just but, never know. Those hogs are everywhere. They could be in Menards. <laughs> so, bacon right there. That's right. You know, I'm pro retention holster. If somebody's going to see a gun, that should not be able to just pull it out. And the holsters I have, that would be the case. So I went with the, the retention holster I had and I matched the gun to that, if it makes sense. Which I've kind of gone another way. I figured out a system where you could use any holster and make it a retention holster, duct tape. And then you carry a box cutter with you if you run into trouble. You cut the tape off. I'll be right with you. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a minute. Get those people's wallets first, and I'll get. I'm working on mine here. That that's right. Turn this stuff sticks to everything. 
it. <laughs> well, so to, so, take, so to wrap the story, uh, we yes. went home, dropped off our groceries and our, our lumber. and <laughs> Because everybody has lumber and groceries simultaneously. Wait, wait, groceries and lumber? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, two stores. So I dropped it off and okay. knew we were going to the school to see my daughter's volleyball game, which I think I called you from. And I uh, said, well, I can't bring the gun into the school as of, as of yet. So I'm just going to lock that back in a safe, carry something else. We get to the game and decide we're, we're going to go and watch the game together. So we secure the firearm that I did have with me. But I still had my holster on my belt from the SIG. Oh, okay. So she's like, are you going to take that off? I'm like, no, why? Ooh, <laughs> well, what do you think? I, said, I think it's great. It's because these folks know me anyway. Most of them know them pro gun, and if they see an empty holster, what are they going to call the cops? This guy's got a, an empty holster. Okay, well, what's in it? Nothing, but it's for a gun. <laughs> you know, I just kind of wanted to to again be an ambassador of I'm one of you guys, and yeah, I shoot when I'm not in school because I'm not allowed to, but. I'm not going to pretend just, or hide something. Just so something. you know, a friend of mine, actually uh, Buzz Mills, from uh, the owner of Gunsight, mm-hmm. uh, had had guns drawn on him when he was carrying an empty holster. Really? Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, he was he flew his plane into the airport and went into the airport to pick up somebody, and of course they dutifully took off their guns. They open carry everywhere. It's Arizona, right? And. This herd of cops follows them out to his airplane, pulls guns on them. They don't have any guns on there, having empty holsters. Oh my and these God. guys are yelling at them and you know, make, barking orders and all because they have empty holsters on. So just be wow. aware, not all police officers are really tuned up completely. An act of provocation is still an act of provocation, and the results you get may not be what you thought you were going to wow, get. Wow, I'm glad I didn't need that, that advice prior to something. Thank you. Yes. So just kind of a, an FYI on that deal is that some people look at that, and they can, in their minds, insert the invisible gun. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that side of it. I did get my uh, popcorn and pizza delivered really rapidly, though. They <laughs> Vendors took care of me. <laughs> Lightning ah, response. That's a good thing. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's see. I sent you the picture. You got the picture of the uh, Ruger knives. <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more jealous of The Ruger knives I'm definitely jealous about. I may have to, uh, to yeah, drive that, down there and cool. steal half those from you. Okay. Uh, so the, you other picture, the, the other picture. The other picture. It's just lunacy. Far more interested in that one. <laughs> the the uh, flamethrower picture? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, really. It's kind of like, okay. Like I said, anytime you have fire that is so thick it casts a hard shadow on the ground, you're having fun. <laughs> fire. <laughs> Who brought the marshmallows? Come on. Seriously, somebody's got to have marshmallows here. And, and like a 25 the... foot long stick. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful pic. The, the, this thing is really, I tell you what, I'll put it up on uh, Twitter. I'm going to throw it oh, up yeah. there. All right. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll do that. In fact, let's see. Can Boy, we you... use technology at the moment and do this while we're doing the show? How cool is that? I am they'll... so challenged. Wow, they'll, all get this the, stuff. If, they'll get the picture before they can hear the show. How cool is that? If I had a 12 year old here, we could make this happen, <laughs> right? Wait. <laughs> well, we're that mature. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Someday we'll. Oh, I mean together, <laughs> combined. Oh, okay. You're talking about accumulative <laughs> score here. Accumulative, yeah. Accumulative. That's that's what I say. Well, that, that works too. Let me see. I'm t- I'm, I'm I'm putting this and talking about this tweeting? on. Yes, on after. How do you spell it? after show? Whoop. Nope. That's right. Back up. It's after show. Re- now. Really big shoe. Really big shoe. We're dating ourselves. Host. That's right. Ed Sullivan Ed reference Solvent. for you younger folks. That's right. Ed Sullivan. <laughs> so. <laughs> he was good with his money. Oh, but wait. It's up on Twitter right now. See that? See that? How high tech you are. See there? How cool that is? Okay. There I am with my flamethrower. <laughs> I mean, seriously. How cool if there was is ever, this? If there was ever a meme to be made, it's with that picture. Oh. I mean, it's laid out right. You've got the room above oh, yeah. and below for the font. <laughs> I, I had one guy that he, he provide. We can do a caption contest. On right, one exactly. guy said, uh, said, "Sir, your creme brulee will be ready in a moment." <laughs> the, one, and one guy says, "I will never again post anything to Tom Gresham and then say flame suit on." <laughs> <laughs> I like it, which a typical thing. So, oh, nice. but no, this thing was. I mean, 
And totally legal, right? Not a, yes. If this is not a guy toy, I don't know what is. Wow. I mean, holy cow, now, you're shooting fire. Now, was this a legitimate product, or is this somebody's home? Yes, no, you can buy this. No, no, you can buy this. It was a rig. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's ready to go. You buy this thing, and now you, I think they said it's roughly 1500 bucks, which is, while pricey, not crazy. We've I've spent more and gotten less. Yeah, you uh, spend that you know, on a good scope. Well, yeah, and seriously, is there any party where you will not be the life of the party? <laughs> <laughs> when you, uh, preferably an outdoor party would probably be a good idea. Hey, Jim Tom, you, know. you got a light? <laughs> oh, boy, do I have a light. <laughs> you do. I can think of a number of blazing saddle lines, but you can't say. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. Pardon me. Yeah, there you yes, go. So yes. what a, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just staring at this thing online and going, yeah, that was. it really was that much fun. Well, I'll tell you how much fun it was. Every member of the film crew we were with had to go shoot the flamethrower. Awesome. Everybody walked over eventually. We put the cameras down. All right, we got all our video? Yeah, okay. And we shot it until there was no more fuel in that thing where it was just, pfft, that's it, gone. <laughs> the, the description uh, you gave me was great. A power washer with fire. <laughs> there it is. That's That's the whole thing. So... I mean, and you look at how far that thing is shooting. It's got to be 40 20. feet. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, yeah, easily. Thir- I mean, 30 at least. 30 at least, exactly. And I think you can crank up the pressure with the CO2 tank that's hooked in there and extend your range. So it's kind of like uh, you know, hypervelocity stuff right there. There you go. Nice. You can burn your pile of leaves out front from your couch. It's convenient. <laughs> and then you think, okay, what would I do? With, you know, Oh, you have grass growing up in the cracks in your driveway? <laughs> piece of cake baby <laughs> from here <laughs> that's right <laughs> i got you covered oh man sweet no that was fun so it's now uh it's now up on twitter so there you go okay awesome all right guys well i am going to the nasgw which is called the distributors or wholesaler show this week that's where the companies like davidson's the gallery mm-hmm. of guns uh, there are about 30 distributors in the country, right. and the manufacturers go there and show their wares to the distributors about two months before the shot show. So we get kind of an early lead on oh. everything. So Ooh. next week, I will have word on new stuff. Hornaday has done a teaser ad that says, uh, We change everything, and they're going to make an announcement in a couple of days there. I don't know what it is, but it's supposed to be like a big deal. Sweet. And somebody said, It's left handed ammunition. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Everybody's going, what? Did he just say left hand? What? I just Googled it. I can't find any. Oh, Mike McNett, he's got <laughs> McNett will make it. That's right. He'll make anything. You know. Sweet. He'll just read box it, package it, say, this is ammo for lefties. There you go. Brilliant. It. Like the adjustable crescent wrench. I always wanted to advertise on TV. <laughs> make big money. It's truth in advertising, right? Yeah. Truth, truth in advertising. There you go. It's metric it. and SAE. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, you guys have a good week, and uh, I'm going to go find out what's new, and we'll have all that information next week right here. Sounds good, buddy. Great. Awesome. Tom, thanks for your help. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. All righty. Everybody be good. We're gone. Tell your friends about the Gun Talk After Show, a more informal setting featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim commenting on topics that are important to you. Available on iTunes and other podcatchers, and the Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android.